can say a lot of words. Uh, <laughs> but I, I just want to confine it to this issue. You know, Donald Trump has a plan. He really does. He has a strategy to turn people against people all across this nation. He wants to turn white against black and brown. He wants to turn Christian against Muslim. He wants to turn straight against gay and, and trans, particularly against trans. And he wants to turn everybody in America against immigrants, particularly immigrants of color. Now, the reason for this is because he hopes if we're all fighting each other, that nobody will notice that Donald Trump and his corrupt buddies are stealing the great wealth and dignity of this country. That's why he does it. answer here is to say as president, I will celebrate what we all know. And that is that immigration does not make our country weaker. Immigration makes our country stronger. So let me be more specific about what we should do and what kind of policies I want to put in place. First, we need to expand legal immigration in this country. We need to get families back together. We need to be able to be with your daughter. This is important. Yes. Second, we need a pathway to citizenship for the people who are here to stay. Yes, dreamers, but not just dreamers. We need grandmas. We need uncles. We need friends. We need neighbors. We need everybody out of the shadows and on a fair and achievable pathway to citizenship. And then the, the third, we need to stop this Trump-made crisis down at our border. We need to stop it. It is ugly and it is mean and it is not who we want to be as Americans. We can start that by resuming aid to Central America. Help stabilize the countries that are under so much stress. You know, when it first came out that our nation, our government under Donald Trump was actually taking away children from their families, I went immediately down to the border, went down to McAllen, Texas. Uh, this is before they started blocking out uh, anybody from the Senate or the House from doing this. And I, I got in to one of these places right off. And I just want everyone in this room to envision this for a minute. It's like a giant Amazon warehouse. Only it smelled bad and was dirty. And when I walked in, on the left, it was just one cage after another after another of men. About 10 feet wide, about 40 feet deep, a toilet back in the corner. And people crammed in so tightly they couldn't lie down and another cage, and another cage, and another cage. On the right were cages of women. Same way, just crammed in, and I thought, I can't imagine anything worse until I walked into the main room. And there in the main room, an area about the size of, a little bigger than this central section, was a cage of little girls. Just locked up. Little girls, no toys, no one to talk to, just little girls. And over there, another cage of them, freestanding cages. Another cage over here of little boys. And another after that, as far as you can see. And back in the corner was a cage of nursing mothers. Mamas with little babies. And I stopped and talked to as many people as I could. I talked to one mother, and she said to me that she was from Central America. She said she never planned to come to the US, but she had given a drink of water to a police officer. And the word had come back that the gangs believed she was helping the police. And she knew that meant she and her baby would be killed. So she wrapped her baby up and she ran. And she got picked up at our border. America is a country that opens its arms and opens its hearts 
to refugees, to people seeking asylum, to people who come here to try to build a future. That is the country we want to be. And that's the country we want to be. of Trump personally. We have two former Trump employees who worked in the Trump Country Club. They were undocumented. They knew it. Trump loved it to exploit them. The minute they started standing up for them rights and we brought it to their attention, they get fired. Now, obviously, like you said, they work hard. They, they got jobs. But if you ever doubt the hypocrisy of Trump, on immigrants, talk to these two workers. They're glad to be, he would love to exploit them until they stand up for their rights. That is what this is all about. They do not want workers to stand up, whether they're immigrants, white, black, or whatever. So you are the courageous ones in this fight. Yes. Yes. So we have a question from the, the Sunshine State, Florida. Where we gotta win Florida. So Carmen from Orlando, a uh, housekeeper, was a former housekeeper at Disney World. So Carmen. Hi Carmen. Hello, how are you? I'm good. So my name is Carmen Ramos. I'm from local 737 from Orlando, Florida. Uh -huh. I was a housekeeper for 26 years and I retired. Now I'm an organizer. I am very proud because my union, we won historic race in Orlando. Yes. Woo. Yes, it was great. Uh, but still, it's not enough. There is a lot of workers that are still either homeless or living in hotel rooms. Uh, unfortunately, my best friend is one of them. Uh, she has to work two jobs in order to make uh, ends meet, but it's not enough. It's not enough. Uh, throughout the 26 years that I was with uh, working as a housekeeper, I thought how, the, uh, how, how, it, how hard it was for the housekeepers to work, do the job, go home, be paid low wages. Me, myself, I lost my son. Uh, he died to cancer, cancer. Uh, and to this day I regret not spending that time with him. So, because of the clown that we have in the White House, because I won't call him a president, he's a clown. My question to you, Senator, is what um, are you going to do to help us organize the workers so that one job should be enough? So, thank you for the question, Carmen, and let me just start by saying, I'm sorry, about your son, but glad that you lift up his story and talk about the importance of worker rights because they fit our human rights, our personal rights. Um, not being able to have one job that pays enough has a real impact on families. You know, I mentioned earlier about when my dad had a heart attack and how my mother went to the Sears where she got a full-time minimum wage job. And that minimum wage job saved our house and saved our family. And I think of it as the first lesson my mother taught me that no matter how scared you are and no matter how hard it looks, you reach down deep, you find what you have to find, you pull it up, you take care of the people you love. But here's the thing, that story is also a story about government. Because when I was a girl, when this happened, a full-time minimum wage job in America would support a family of three. It would pay a mortgage, it would cover the utilities, and it would put food on the table. Today, a full-time minimum wage job in America will not keep a mama and a baby out of poverty. That is wrong, and that is why I am in this fight. There it is. trying to say earlier about corruption, because understand this, when I was a girl, the question asked in Washington, 
is where do we set the minimum wage to give a family of three a solid foundation, a toehold in America's middle class, something they can build on, a place, no one used the language, but it was, where one job would be enough. Today, the question asked in Washington is where do we set the minimum wage to maximize the profits of giant multinational corporations. Well, I don't want a government that works for giant multinational corporations. I want one that works for our families. So what we can do, we can, we can fight to raise the minimum wage. You bet we can. Yes. It is time. Let's fight for 15. It is time. And there is more. Think about what a president can do, I love saying this, all by herself. Hey. One in every four people in America works for a company that has a federal government contract. Those companies compete for those contracts and our president and our president's administration set the terms of that competition. Well, I think it's time to say, if you want to get taxpayer dollars in your contracts, then you better be paying your workers a living wage. So, uh, last July, you came to National Airport yeah. to support our fight with airline catering, which is all around the country. We have a really special person here today who I spent a little time with from Charlotte, North Carolina. I'd like to introduce Bobby Kirkpatrick from Charlotte, who works at Sky Chef in Charlotte, North Carolina. Thank you, Dean. I'm not special at all. Wage is about 1034. That's one of the hubs of American Airlines. 
American, United, and Delta make billions and billions of dollars. And people like Bobby have 38 years making 16 bucks an hour. He's an unbelievable person, but we've got to change that situation. I appreciate his courage. Thank you. Thank you. going to the 
billionaires and asking them to put up the big bucks. I'm not doing closed door fundraisers where I make promises that nobody else gets to hear to the folks who are rich. I'm not running special programs to say if you raise tens of thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars for my campaign, you'll get special access to me. Do you know who gets access to my time? You. That's right. So the way I 
see this is we've had 40 years, basically, of this. It's been just about 40 years, a little under. And we've watched year by year by year as the total number of union jobs keeps going down. Sure, we've got low unemployment in this country right now, but look at the quality of the jobs people have got. How many jobs do you have to work in order to make a living? Two, three, right? How, hold on, how many fingers it takes? Right, that's not how it's working. That's not how it works for workers. So that's the kind of America we've got. And the question is, how are we going to fight back against it? We've talked about some of the pieces. We can do some of this on minimum wage. Let me give you another idea behind it. I've got an idea for something called accountable capitalism. Okay, I believe in markets. I think you can do a lot with markets. But here's what I also believe. Giant corporations now, they have no loyalty to the United States. They've got loyalty to exactly one thing, their own profitability, their own bottom line, making money for their shareholders and making money for their executives. And if they think they could save a nickel or push back against a union by sending a job overseas, they'll do it in a heartbeat. So here's my proposal for the big corporations in this country is to say, wait just a minute here. You get to run these big corporations. You've got all of this protection from the government. You've got to set aside 40% of your board seats to let your employees elect who's going to sit on the board of these corporations. Think about what that means. Next time a corporation gets ready to make a decision to move jobs overseas, to cut wages, to fight a union, at least we can have employees in the room and voting. I think that's going to make a real difference. So there's a proposal. That's at least change threatens every living thing on this planet. And the most scary part of this is every time the scientists go back and look again at the data, more evidence, the problem is worse than we thought and we have less time than we thought. So what are we going to do about this as a country? And i I got a plan on this. We're going to have to go with this all the way when I get in the White House. But a big part of that is we ought to do what we do best as Americans. Let's go up tenfold on what we spend on research and development. Let's innovate our way out of this. But here comes the next part. There's an upcoming $17 trillion market for green all around the world. Green energy, cleaning up the air, the carbon and the water. Um, uh, desalinization, lots of green stuff. A lot of it hasn't even been invented yet. So let's invest in the research and the development. I got the money figured out on how we can do that. And then part two, to say you can build whatever you want to build from our research, but you've got to build it right here in the United States of America. The research is taxpayer dollars, it's going to be American jobs about 1.2 million new manufacturing jobs, manufacturing jobs that are good union jobs. And then here comes the best part for that. We sell that stuff around the world. If we can't sell it, we give it away around the world because we have got to fight this climate crisis. And the way we're going to fight it is with good American workers doing good union jobs. So that's one thing we're going to do. So we have, we have one more question. Everything. You know, you see this thing, you want more of this, of Donald Trump, and you can figure out what he's saying. <laughs> Senator, many of us who want to win, we have doubts that the Democrats are going to be tough enough to take on this fight. Because we know, one thing you want to say about the Republicans, Trump, they play to win. They're dirty, they're nasty, they don't care about America, they're traitors to this country, in my opinion. I want to know how you think you, you yourself are going to be tough enough to beat this clown. <laughs> I've already told you all who I am and where I came from, and I hope I've made it clear. In my life, nobody ever gave me anything. I've fought for it every inch of the way. 
And understand this, we get into this presidential general election against Donald Trump, I will outwork, I will out-organize, and I will outlast Donald Trump or anybody the Republicans put up. Telling me to sit down and be quiet. I have stood up and fought back, and this is the fight of your lifetime and my lifetime. And understand this Mitch McConnell said it all. Nevertheless, I will persist. Selfie.